Good morning, it's Mr. Muffin, 9 o'clock uh, Atlanta, Indiana time. Um, I'm down at the layout with a copy of the 2022 Volume 2 catalog from Lionel. It was released about 60 seconds ago online on their website. I'll be sending out an email shortly with the links and so forth. So it's always exciting to see the new catalog. I'm going to try to show it to you on this uh, stand right here. Uh, so let me pick the catalog up and open it up. Uh, the front of the catalog talks a lot about the Lion Base 3 with the app that's going to be out. And they mentioned in the dealer call that, that testing and production is on schedule. They're going to have this out this fall. Um, for the end of the year anyway. So O-Scale stuff. Uh, the big news in the catalog was basically a new version of the Challenger. Um, this is the brass hybrid, uh, which means the body is all brass made on top of a uh, die-cast metal frame um, and motor and system. Uh, it's the same chassis that was in the previous Challenger, so we know that's dependable. Um, so, And there's lots of different versions of the Challenger. Uh, not the earliest one, but kind of the second generation one all the way through, I think, 1944 production. Um, pilot model, Greyhound model. There are three models in black, um, three different road numbers, including one that's unnumbered. So if you want to put a number in of your own and um, be able to run multiple unit uh, steam engines, uh, you can do that. Includes whistle steam, all new tooling, of course. Uh, on this page, uh, another uh, Union Pacific Challenger up here. Again, uh, three road numbers in this scheme. Uh, three no road numbers in this scheme. The details are different. Like, notice the size of the sandbox at the top based upon that version. And then down below, the Challenger scheme down here. Very nice. Um, Lionel also acquired the tooling from MTH to make the L1 Mikado, Pennsylvania L1 Mikado. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are in the catalog. There's two road numbers without the uh, little cabin in the back right here. And two road numbers with the cabin. And then over here is another one, and I forgot what the difference was. Obviously road number. Oh, it's got the antenna across the top. When they made, experimented with getting the railroad phone to work, they put an antenna across the top of uh, the Mikado, across the boiler. I'm not, saying, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing antenna correctly. My wife teases me about that a lot. So however it's supposed to be pronounced, that's it. Um, Santa Fe uh, had a few of these. They bought, I think four was the number. So there's a Santa Fe version, uh, Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton had a couple they bought from the Pennsylvania and Lehigh in, in New England. So those are the paint schemes of the L1 Mikados. Turn the page, Lionel also acquired from MTH the tooling for the Greenbrier. And you remember the Greenbrier was basically a passenger steam engine uh, made uh, by the Chesapeake and Ohio. It's a 484 wheel configuration, so it's like a northern, right? And uh, so they came out with uh, several versions of this. This one is a version of 614 uh, that's shiny, that uh, kind of in the late um, excursion railroad days. And this one down here, 611, is not shiny. Uh, this 614 over here, again with the, pen with the passenger decoration in the white, um, is not shiny. And then down here is Family Lines Rail System, 614. Oh, I guess I forgot to mention, this is Chessy uh, Excursion up here. Um, and then uh, Family Lines, S-C-L-L-N-N, at the bottom right. Um, here's another one, 613. Again, not shiny. This is probably the one I'm going to buy, this one right here. And it had uh, the elephant ears on the front, kind of like the New York Central had to whisk um, smoke away. 
And um, the, just a few of the Greenbriars had that, but it's really a nice addition to this model. Uh, beautiful engine, uh, I'm planning to add that to our collection. Um, uh, Lionel also purchased from MTH this uh, wood-sided caboose, um, and uh, they've decorated it here for the Chesapeake and Ohio, and, and it is just a beautiful model. And uh, we're going to see some more paint schemes in that caboose here in a little bit. And then they're also bringing out heavyweight passenger cars in Chesapeake and Ohio with the new LED lighting that constantly stays on. Um, they have people inside their car, in their 18-inch cars, uh, I'd like to remind you. There's three two-packs and a diner, Station Sounds Diner. Here's one uh, with a combo car and a coach, baggage and a coach, and then coach and the observation car. And those would look great uh, with the Greenbrier. On the next page is a fantasy scheme they did um, using the, the orange and chrome uh, paint scheme that was planned for that really big turbine, you remember, that was going to pull passenger cars? And uh, the turbine was not a success. Um, and uh, so what Lionel has taken that turbine paint scheme and applied it to the Greenbrier, uh, it's a fantasy run again, but it, it is gorgeous. And uh, a lot of the fantasy locomotives, like the Pacemaker and Mohawk and so forth, uh, were big sellers. And I'm expecting uh, this one to be as well. This is one of my favorites. And then they brought out Chessie passenger cars to go with it. There's a four-car set, two-car set, and a Station Sounds Diner, 21-inch cars. Uh, just, just gorgeous cars. Uh, they're also bringing back uh, the 260 Mogul, uh, St. Louis and Rio Grande. Middleton and, and Hummelstown, I believe that's in Pennsylvania. Southern Pacific with the Vandy type tender. And then up here, Canadian National, which is going to be very popular. We've got a lot of Canadian National fans that are going to like that. And then they're uh, also doing a series of the coaches, 64 foot coaches, the tooling they bought from MTH, which is just outstanding. These are probably the most beautiful passenger cars I have in my collection. And uh, they're doing three two-packs, uh, Canadian Central, Combo and Coach, Baggage and Coach. And then this is an observation car and a coach. So three two-packs to go with that Canadian National Mogul. That's going to be really popular. Uh, continuing with the Moguls, here's a couple of Strasbourg versions. One from the 2000s up here. My stand is giving me fits. There we go. Um... This Strasburg version, and then this one from the 1970s. I've had a couple people email me about doing custom Strasburg other versions in the Mogul, and um, my understanding is Lionel is planning to offer more of those in another catalog. So I don't believe uh, my being able to do a Mogul in Strasburg in any paint scheme is going to be okay they're reserved that for future catalogs and then these strasburg coaches in the green from the 1970s um there's basically a combo car and three coaches two two packs moving on again strasburg um here is uh some heavyweights um one's in the green and one's in the brown this is uh similar to a new york central paint scheme on this one and this is a Pullman and then up here again is that caboose we saw earlier in Strasburg all right let's turn to diesels for a minute this is going okay isn't it all right so uh, SD 40 dash twos um, the Southern Pacific down here is prototypical and so is the Kodak version up here the Kodachrome version of the paint scheme. Each of the SD42s comes in two powered versions and then a third version that's the Super Bass. So you can have three units together and lots and lots of sound. It's really a, a wonderful way to go. So those are both prototypical for sure. This Southern Pacific over here in the black, um, Black Widow scheme, I don't think they ever painted them like that, but again, a beautiful paint scheme applied to this SD40. This is a tunnel, did I say that? SD40 tunnel motor. Um, and then they also applied uh, the Santa Fe Warbonnet, uh, Freight Warbonnet paint scheme to the SD40 T2. 
And at the bottom down here, a beautiful uh, edition in the Western Pacific. Again, not prototypical, but it could have been. And uh, they ran out there in the West where we needed, uh, we had tunnels. So, uh, but anyway, another beautiful paint scheme on the SD40. And Susquehanna, of course. Uh, so those are the SD40 tunnel motors. Uh, over here are um, FA2s uh, that Lionel's bringing out. Um, the LNN and the Erie... Uh, early Erie Lackawanna scheme where they left the black and they just changed the logo for the Erie Lackawanna. Those are prototypical, of course, L&N and, and, and Erie. And then over here is the Halloween set that plays all the spooky sounds and so forth. And uh, so that's available. And then on the next page, um, what Lionel did, the, the FA2 uh, did not run on the New York Central like this and the Delaware and Hudson and the Pennsylvania. And what Lionel did is took the paint schemes from the PA1, the six-wheel truck diesel, larger diesel, obviously, and they've applied it to FA2s, and they did it for these three roads. And the reason they did it is so you can, those of you guys that have a little bit tighter curves can run uh, a really beautiful passenger consist uh, with shorter cars, uh, potentially, um, and uh, in Delaware and Hudson, New York Central, and Pennsylvania. So those are all three passenger schemes uh, that were prototypically on the PA that Lionel's put them on the FA with the four-wheel trucks. Uh, so it's a much it's smaller diesel and it'll run on tighter curves. So that's why those are out there. And again, they have a Power B and a Super Bass B with the great sound, and then. Uh, Two power units. There's two AAs in the set. Uh, they both have power and and uh, lights and smoke, and only one has sound. Okay. And then the fourth one down here in the corner. Again, they took uh, the Southern Pacific paint scheme, uh, which I don't believe is prototypical on an FA, but have applied it to the FA and uh, for passenger service on the SP. It could be run for freight too late in the game. Uh, but it's a beautiful paint scheme, and so they've offered that in this catalog. Pretty nice. Uh, back here on the next page, um, long, 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 long time ago, uh, back when Lee was a little boy, um, Lionel offered this Mar Marine Corps uh, post-war paint scheme. And so they've taken that paint scheme and applied it to a modern diesel, to the FA-2s, and a military... Uh, paint schemes are very popular, so that that's pretty cool, pretty awesome. They've also uh, got a 60-foot uh, box car, auto box car. They've applied um, marine paint scheme to, and then uh, there's a matching caboose. And then down here are the heavyweight passenger cars again in U.S. Army livery. And those of us that run, you know, long trains of flats with tanks and so forth could use these so we have a station sounds diner again we have the combo coach baggage coach and coach observation car again two packs those will be available uh, in the united states army paint scheme okay they brought uh the sd70 aces back in the heritage paint schemes they were first issued by lionel i would think 15 years ago um road specific details uh beautiful beautiful engines Rio Grande, Chicago Northwestern, Mopac, and Katy. This Katy is very popular. Uh, so those uh, are being brought back by Lionel. SD70 Aces in the UP Heritage. And then on the next page are the Southern Pacific version and the Western Pacific version. And then uh, Montana Rail Link. These are the two really popular paint schemes for then. Thank you, all essential workers, and thank you, veterans. And I think, uh, if I remember right, Missouri, this railroad, Montana Rail Link, was later acquired by UP. So multi-heading them with UP engines would be appropriate if you wanted to. And at the bottom, uh, this leasing company, PRLX, acquired uh, some of these SD70s from uh, Chessie, I think, CSX. And uh, the, some of the employees repainted one of them in this CNO heritage scheme and it ran around the country for a little while until the executives found out about it they thought that was a bad idea and they made them uh, repaint it but for a while that was a prototypical paint scheme 
on an SD70 running around the US. Um, Lionel's also offering the H1544. It's very similar uh, external view to an H16. They've never offered the H15 before. Um, so they brought that out in this catalog, two road numbers per engine. This Rock Island in the early paint scheme, we love that. Central of Georgia, Rio Grande up here. Kansas City Southern, that's beautiful. We don't often see that. And then look at that, Monon. You know, when I heard they were going to do the H1544, I wanted to custom run a couple Monon, and they put it in the catalog. So right there, we can get our Monon H1544s finally. So I'm looking forward to those. And then UP at the bottom. UP orange. Yellow, sorry. Colorblind. Uh, here's a couple of interesting sets. This is the Western Maryland Haggist, Hagerstown Hot Shot set. Uh, the Western Maryland had four of these FA2s. One of them uh, was painted in the circus paint scheme that you see here. And then there was another one in the regular uh, Fireball. And so those are both in this set with a 60-foot boxcar, a flat and trailer. This is a die-cast hopper. And then over here is another circus caboose uh, to match the engine, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And then down here is a Cumber Cumberland Valley Way Freight set from the Cumberland Valley in Pennsylvania. And this has got on it an L2, I believe it is, steam engine, right? Up here in the front, Pennsylvania. And then this is a box car for uh, U.S. Navy. It's Freight Sounds. And then this is a Franklin Apples box car, which uh, is a company along this area. And then here's a flat car with a trolley. And this is an operating bump-and-go trolley. You can take it off. And then another uh, Pennsylvania caboose uh, in the tooling from MTH. So beautiful, beautiful set called the Cumberland Valley Way Freight Set. And uh, they basically have selected industries that actually exist out there along the Cumberland Valley. So pretty cool. Uh, okay, rolling stock. Grow your rolling stock consist. We're in that part of the catalog now. Uh, let's see if I can get to the right pages. Here we go. Um some accessories. They're bringing back three of those. This thing is awesome. We're going to talk about that. Uh, let's go over here. Okay, so here's Flats Tire and Auto. Um, they, bought, they bought that tooling from MTH, and you can do a lot with that. Uh, this is a caboose that's been turned into a creamery, and uh, the caboose comes. It's lit, and uh, uh, with the awnings and everything, and then they've included this laser-cut porch set you can put on the front so the customers can get into the caboose and get their milkshakes and all that kind of stuff and then down here are, are sound uh buildings uh this one is grandpa's workshop and it's got sound in it that that pauses and then starts and pauses and starts and over here is a, a mama's she shed and i don't know what kind of dialogue we're going to get out of mama's she shed but it'll be something and then ho American Flyer. Let's go back just for a second. I mean, the, the printed catalog doesn't have everything in it. The online catalog does. But this um, accessory offering, this is a basically a, a, uh, a gate, right, for a road uh, crossing. And uh, this is a prototypical of a real one. I forgot where it is, somewhere in the south. But basically, uh, as the train comes, it lights up. Gives you a light showing you which direction the train's coming, and it has a siren. And um, so they've duplicated that combination of uh, brass and uh, 3D printing to make this operating accessory. And it comes on a base here with the track crossing and everything fast track, and that'll be just like really, really, really awesome. And there's three different ones of the Carnival uh, buildings in the in this release, this catalog. And they're bringing back the diner again, the Skylight Diner, um, with a different sign, I think. And I, I don't know if those lights, you could turn those. I probably would like to. I guess they're supposed to light up the parking lot. Um, I might want to turn them. I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, so they, that's Mr. Muffin's really fast overview of the 2022 Volume 2 catalog. You can go through it page by page on the Lionel website, www.lionel.com. 
And then all the products that are in the catalog with our pre-order pricing are up and available on our website uh, on a collection uh, we call 2022 Volume 2. And uh, there's a link to that at the top of my webpage, and it'll be in the newsletter I'm sending out. So uh, pretty exciting stuff from Lionel. Uh, Pre-orders are due August 19th. Um, you know, if you want a uh, pre-order, no money's due down uh, with us muffins. Uh, you're welcome to uh, pre-order with no down payment. And, uh, and don't forget, we have a lay-by program where you can spread the payments out over three payments for some of those big steam. Okay, well, that's the 2022 Volume 2 catalog really fast. I did it in 20 minutes, and thank you all for watching.